During the Cold War, the U.S. developed innovative military technologies like the XB-70 Valkyrie, a supersonic nuclear bomber. Despite its advanced design, the XB-70 became obsolete due to Soviet anti-aircraft advancements, notably the S-75 Venus Sam and MiG-25 Foxbat. The high costs and emerging Soviet countermeasures led to the program's cancellation. This historical lesson underscores the need for the U.S. to adapt quickly in today's multipolar world, where technological competition with China is intense. Why the U.S. abandoned the XB-70 supersonic bomber? The Cold War was a wild era in the development of military technology, especially in the field of aerospace. From nuclear-powered strategic bombers. Concepts to manned orbital laboratories, MOL, that would have created a permanent military presence in orbit, some of the craziest and most innovative designs were bandied about, also that the United States could keep ahead of its dreaded Soviet enemy. Some of these concepts even got off the drawing board. Some of these concepts, like the State Route 71 Blackbird, made a significant contribution to the national security of the United States, while breaking just about every flying record imaginable. One aircraft in particular continues to boggle the mind. That is the Air Force's concept for what was basically a high-altitude, supersonic nuclear bomber. Known as the XB-70, this was the Air Force's attempt to take the heavy payload capacity of the B-52 Stratofortress and marry it to the supersonic capabilities of the B-58 Hustler. The ride of the XB-70 Valkyrie, cut short. Named the Valkyrie and designed by North American Aviation, a defense contractor back in the mid-20th century, that ultimately became part of Boeing through a series of mergers and acquisition, the XB-70 was powered by six General Electric YJ-93 turbojet engines. These engines allowed for 28,800 pounds of thrust. There were also powerful afterburners on the XB-70. In fact, those afterburners were the key to prolonged supersonic cruise speed. Thanks to this and other key aerospace design features, like retractable wings and a delta shape, the XB-70 was able to cruise at an astonishing Mach 3. Because of this capability, Air Force planners believed that they had a nuclear bomber that could outrun and outfly anything that the Soviets possessed. Sadly, the XB-70 was obsolete before it ever took flight. That's because the Soviets developed an anti-aircraft weapons system that could destroy even the Mach 3 flying XB-70, making whatever other capabilities the bird possessed worthless. In 1955, when her designers first conceived of her, there was nothing in the Soviets' arsenal that could counter the capabilities that the Valkyrie was bringing to any potential fight. The Soviets were so scared of what this strategic bomber could do that they dedicated immense resources to developing and deploying countermeasures against her. The Soviet S-75 Vina surface-to-air missile, SAM, had been in development for seven years and came online just when the Valkyrie was set to take flight in 1964. It was more than a match for matching the XB-70. Not only was the S-75 Venus SAM system operational by the time the Valkyrie was ready to hit the skies, but so too was the Soviet's fastest fighter interceptor to date. The MiG-25 Foxbat This warplane was specifically designed with the XB-70 in mind. Thus, Whatever nuclear bomb capabilities the XB-70 possessed and whatever threat this system was designed to pose to the Soviet Union was negated before the Valkyrie even deployed. That, and the fact that the Valkyrie was a costly plane per unit necessitated Washington's policymakers to rethink its investment in this incredible flying machine. As early as 1961, 
The Kennedy administration recognized the risk posed to the Valkyrie was greater than whatever benefits the plane provided. So, the Kennedy administration opted to reduce the U.S. government's commitment to the bird and relegated it to the design phase, drastically cutting its budget and the commitment of the Department of Defense to the Valkyrie program. In 1961, the government had spent $800 million on the program, which is the equivalent of about $7.8 billion in today's dollars. It was all waste, as it turned out. The Soviets were, back in the 1950s and 60s, a true peer competitor. Despite whatever one may think about Russia today, and most so-called experts get Russia totally wrong today, it is a mistake to believe that the Soviets of yesteryear were backward or incompetent. They had a strong scientific base and skilled engineers. Toward the end of the Cold War, as the Soviet system was collapsing, that changed. But at the time the XB-70 was in development, the Soviets were keeping pace with their American rivals.